Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explaining in details on to a centrifugal casting process with its types and applications. So let us start with the basics setup for a centrifugal casting process. So just you can see in the case of the centrifugal casting process, it will be two rollers is being used. So one roller that will be known as a drive roller and another one it will be free roller. So basically this drive roller which will be connected with a driving shaft. So as from the rotation of drive shaft, this roller it will be also rotating. And as you can see, in case of the centrifugal casting process, we are using rotating mold and that will be supported onto a drive roll and free rollers. So in case of the making a hollow kind of components with the help of centrifugal casting process, so just you can see with the help of ladle molten form of the metal that will be pouring into the mold with the help of spot. So just you can see in case of the centrifugal casting is a process in which the molten metal is poured and allowed to solidify it in a revolving mold. So by the application of the driving shaft or one of the roller it will be connected like a drive roller. So it will be rotating into a clockwise directions and our free roller which will be also rotating into the clockwise directions. So this rotating mold it will be supporting onto a drive roller as well as onto a free roller. So which will be rotating into anti-clockwise directions. So due to that rotations it will be generating a centrifugal force. So due to the centrifugal force our molten form of the metal it will be attached onto the inner surface of the rotating mold. So by this process you should make a hollow casting without using the core that is the main advantage. So the centrifugal force due to the revolving mold holds the molten metal against the mold wall until it solidified. So pouring of the metal as well as the solidification process it will be into the casting process. Then the material used for preparing molds may be cast iron, steel, sand or graphite for a non-ferrous kind of castings. So the process is used for making a castings of hollow cylindrical shape. So that is the main application of a centrifugal casting process. So the various centrifugal casting techniques that will be including as a true centrifugal casting process. Second one semi centrifugal casting and third that will be centrifuge casting process. So now we will discussing with a first one and that will be true centrifugal casting process. So just you can see the basic setup. So here that will be a shaft which will be connected with a drive mechanism. So it will be rotating at high speed and onto that shaft our metallic mold is being added. So according to the rotation of the shaft this metallic mold it will be also rotated and another side just you can see this is our pouring basin. So with the help of ladle molten form of the metal that will be into the pouring basin towards the mold or you can say rotating mold and another side of this rotating mold it will be the end cover plates. So after the centrifugal force is being imparting by the rotation of this shaft after some time it will be solidification process is going on. So due to the centrifugal force onto the inner surface just you can see this sides. So this metal is being solidified and it will be making a hollow castings without using a core. So true centrifugal casting is used to produce parts that are symmetrical about the axis like that of the pipes, tubes, bushings, liners and rings. The Outside shape of the castings can be round, octagonal, hexagonal as per the my requirements. But inside shape is perfectly round due to the radially symmetrical force. This eliminates the need for cores for producing a hollow castings. So that is the major advantages of true centrifugal casting process. Without using a core you should make a hollow component like a pipes, tubes, bushings, etc. So the figure shows the true centrifugal casting process. 
So in that case of the true centrifugal castings, the steps is being involving. So first one, the mold of the desired shape is prepared with metal and the walls are coated with a refractory ceramic coatings. Then the mold is rotated about its axis at high speed in the range between 300 to 3000 revolution per minute or you can say RPM. So it will be rotating at high speed. So a measured quantity of the molten metal is poured into the rotating mold. So generally that quantity of the molten form of the metals that will be depends upon the shape, size as well as thickness of our hollow job or you can say hollow cylindrical job. The centrifugal force of the rotating molds throws the liquid metal towards the mold wall and holds the molten metal until it solidified. After solidification process, it will be removed and you will get your cast product. So the casting cools and solidified from its outer surface towards the axis of the rotations of the mold, thereby promoting a directional solidification process. So by this easily controlling the directional solidification process into the castings, so there will be removing or you can say reducing the casting defects. The thickness of the castings obtained can be controlled by the amount of liquid metal is being poured. So that will be depends upon the thickness. So you should calculate the how much amount of volume is being required or you can say quantity is being required for a molten form of the metal. Now an inherent quality of the true centrifugal casting is based on to the fact that the non-metallic impurities in castings being less dense than the metal are forced towards the inner surface of the castings due to the centrifugal force. So that will be the major advantages of the centrifugal force is being generating into this casting process. So these impurities can be machined later by the suitable machining process or you can say that generally we are using a boring operations for making a smooth inner surfaces. Then the mold may be rotated horizontally or vertically, both are possible for the case of the true centrifugal casting process. When the mold is rotated about horizontal axis, a true centrifugal cylindrical inside surface is produced. If rotated on a vertical axis, the parabolic inside surface is being produced. So as from the requirement of the inner surface, I would like to select a horizontal axis or you can say that vertical axis. So in case of the horizontal axis, it will be a cylindrical inside surface is being produced. But in case of the vertical axis, it will be production of a parabolic inside surface. Force and getting risering systems are totally not required for this process. And after that, you will also make a hollow components. Then second part or you can say second types of centrifugal castings and that will be semi centrifugal casting process. So just you can see the basic setups. So basically in case of the semi centrifugal casting process, it will be onto a vertical axis. So onto the vertical axis, this is our shaft and that will be connected with a drive mechanisms. So it will be rotating against your vertical axis. So this shaft, it will be connected with the revolving table and onto the table, similar kind of arrangement we should use into the normal casting process. So for here, this is our cop and this is our drag and in between it will be the parting line. So around the parting line, our castings is to be made and with the help of flask, it will be combined. So with the help of holding fixers, this whole the assembly of the cob drag, it will be onto the table. And as you can see onto the top of the side, it will be pouring base and getting systems. So from top of the side, it will be pouring of the molten form of the metal from outside. And if you want to make a hollow, so you should use a core materials. But basically in case of the semi centrifugal casting process, we should make a solid cast materials. So in case of the semi centrifugal casting process is used to produce solid castings and hence the requires a core to produce a hollow cavities. So that will be depends upon my requirements of the shape and size of the job. The process is used only for the symmetrical shape object and the axis of the rotations of the mold is always vertical. 
So that is the major disadvantage or you can say limitations of semi-centrifugal casting process. Gear blanks, sieves, wheels and pulley are the commonly produced parts by these methods. So the figure indicating the semi-centrifugal casting process and basically in that process that will be the wheel shape of the casting is being produced. So some of the steps it will be involving for this process. So this is our basic setups and the mold is prepared into the usual manner using cop and drag box. The mold cavity is prepared with its central axis being vertical and concentric with the axis of the rotations. So the core is placed in positions and the mold is rotated at suitable speeds. Usually less than we are using into the true centrifugal casting process. So basically it will be less than 3000 revolution per minute. The centrifugal force produced due to the rotation of the mold causes the molten metal to fill the cavity and to produce the desired shape and size. Then the last one and that will be the centrifuge casting process. So just you can see this is the basic setup. So once again in case of the centrifuging casting process it will be always works onto its vertical axis. So just you can see this is our shaft and that will be connected with a drive mechanisms. So by the application of the rotation of this shaft it will be connected with a mold. So just you can see from both the end it will be our molds. And with the help of ladder, we should pour the molten form of the metal according to the quantity is being required for a molten form of the metals. So by the rotations, so this mold it will be also rotated and due to the centrifugal force, it will be fill the castings or you can say cavity with a molten form of the metals. So in the true and semi-centrifugal casting process, the axis of the mold or cavity coincide with the axis of the rotations. But in case of the centrifuging process, the axis of the mole cavity does not coincide with the axis of the rotation. So this is the basic fundamental difference between all three processes. The mole is designed with the part cavities located away from the axis of the rotation. So just you can see onto the both the ends it will be our mole and the castings. Hence this process is suitable for a non-symmetrical castings. So if you want to manufacturing a non-symmetrical casting, so that would be more preferable as a centrifuging casting process. So that will be the process. So in that process involving some of the steps like uh, as you can see, this is the figure and this is our shaft which will be connected with a drive mechanism. So it will be rotating. So onto that shaft which will be connected with a cop and drag mechanisms. And onto your parting lines, it will be making a castings or you can say cavities. And if you want to make a hollow, so you should place a core. So at your top of the side, it will be inserting the molten form of the metal. And due to the centrifugal force, this cavity or you can say casting, which will be filled with the molten form of the metal. So this is our side view and just you can see also into the top view. So this is our central sprue. So on to the top of the side, it will be pouring the molten form of the metals. So these all are the getting systems. So that will be depends upon the size and shape of our products. So you should make a number of product with the help of centrifuging casting process. So the several moles cavity are arranged into a circle and connected to a central down sprue through the gets. So the axis of the down sprue is common to the axis of the rotation of the mold. So this is our central axis which will be connected with the castings with the help of getting systems. So as the mold is rotated, the liquid metal is poured down the sprue which fits the metal into the mold cavity under the centrifugal force. The rotational speed depends on the number of factors such as molding mediums like uh, which kind of sand, metal or ceramic is being used. Secondly, size of the castings. So basically that will be used for the smaller size. Types of the metal being poured and the distance of the cavity from the central axis or you can say sprue axis. 
and centrifuging is done only about a vertical axis so that will be the basic disadvantages of this process so only you should preferring a vertical axis so some of the advantages of centrifugal casting process in general so in case of the centrifugal casting eliminates mid wall defects then centrifugal casting controls the impurities so you should reduce the impurities which will be generally found into the normal casting process centrifugal castings greatly reduce the micro porosity so that will be one of the advantages some of the limitations or disadvantages like length to diameter ratio and the cost is being increasing shape and mold die cost which will be having a higher cost small inside diameters safety and cost good foundry practices are required so skill labor that will be the required for controlling all the process so i hope you understand this if you like this then subscribe and share modi mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching